Chapter 2. Home. The Mission on the Road Again. Theron felt a sigh of relief when he broke the tree line and crested the hill. His shoulders dropped. The armor he wore weighed on him, but seeing these familiar lands, he felt the weight lift suddenly. He could see the fields and farms extending beyond the horizon like a blanket. He could just make out the silhouettes of the palace and the spire on the horizon and the walls that called to him. Just above it all was the great celestial body, Altyrian, though the Eldari called it Caleth. The moon, Oris, was off to its right today, far off in the distance. He was almost home. His horse neighed as if sensing his thoughts. I know, Snow. He spoke softly to her, patting her roughly on the side of her neck. She closed her eyes in response to his touch. We're almost there. With his heels, he spurred Snow down the hill. Theron heard the clinking of armor as the rest of his team followed closely behind, now passing through the forest. They began to chatter amongst themselves, finally letting their guards down after crossing familiar borders. He started to sing a song. The rest of his team picked up on it, and soon all 100 horses were clopping along with the song filling the air. And we're coming home, he sang loudly. Home to where the trees grow tall and the willow calls and calls and calls. He heard them all clap in unison once, twice, three times. And we're coming home, he continued softer now. His voice fell out of the chorus, but nobody noticed. Theron and his company passed expansive fields where farmers waved to the company of weary soldiers as they passed. A few of his company waved back. They found themselves near the outskirts of the city by the main gate. The town that had sprung up outside the walls was just as curious of the soldiers, though it was more in hushed voices and stares. They passed the ancient stone walls, walls that had stood for thousands of years long before the country of Alara rose. These were the walls of the Firstlings. Though the capital city was now long gone, the bones of the Kingdom of Rain were as strong as ever. Passing through the gate, the sun was blocked out by the massive spire that rose from the center of the city, casting a great shadow on Theron. The main street into the city was paved with stone buildings and potted greenery. The cobblestone streets were cracked and old, and the city itself seemed to have learned to live with the earth that was slowly trying to reclaim its place. At the end of the long street was the large, square-like palace, painted in black. With his company, he passed down the street, down the market square, beyond the interior walls of the city, and into the royal district. And he was home. Welcome home, soldiers of rain. He heard the officer call out across the throne room. The soldiers remained quiet, as was custom. They all bowed their heads lower. Theron counted the tiles on the floor. He counted the moments until he could go home. He counted the seconds until he could sleep in his own bed once more. You have done well in service of our great and lasting kingdom, the high constable spoke. The queen was not in this room as usual, not that the troops noted her absence. Most assumed she had more important things to do. The Great Mother has protected you and guided you back home. We seek forgiveness for our sins, the soldiers called out, still kneeling before the throne, their voices echoing off the marble walls. You are forgiven, the High Constable spoke. Theron hated their voice. He hated the shrill, nasally nature of this would-be soldier who commanded so much respect and knew nothing of the sacrifices that his company had made. He doubted the High Constable had ever been in battle, let alone ever lifted a sword. The clack, clack, clack of the High Constable's staff echoed as he paced in front of the throne. We are forgiven, they replied in unison. Theron rose with the others. He watched the hunched shape 
of the High Constable Malik stare back at them, scrutinizing them. Theron could see he was preparing to speak. They're sending us out again, he thought to himself, feeling the pit in his stomach grow. He ached to rest, but he put the thought out of mind. A good soldier does what needs doing. The queen, in her wisdom, has asked that you, the forgiven of the Black Company, ride out once more, Malik spoke. It was followed by a silence that permeated the halls. Theron could feel the weight of the glances at his back. His soldiers were tired. He was tired. There is a caravan crossing near the Calanthian Pass. Within this caravan, we have received word that not only will there be a long list of nobles of many houses, but among them a tainted soul. There was some murmuring. The queen asks that you purge them, the constable finished. When would you have us ride? Theron asked, his voice feeling foreign to himself in this room. At first light, Malik replied. The caravan is already moving and you must make haste if you are to catch them at the pass. Resistance? Theron asked. They are traveling with an escort of approximately 200 armed Imperial soldiers, however, be prepared for more. 200 troops? Maybe more all for one mage? Theron asked, raising his eyebrows. This tainted, Malik corrected, is important. We are not sure why, but if they are being guarded so well, Malik paused as he walked up face to face to Theron, who stared back at him without emotion. All the more reason that they don't arrive in Portis, wouldn't you agree, Captain? Theron nodded and said no more. Make no mistake. The army that travels with them must be crushed. But your priority is the noble families they are protecting, and most of all, the tainted, Theron said softly. The tainted, Malik continued, apparently not having heard Theron or choosing to ignore him. You will see the will of the Great Mother done. In the name of the Queen, he tapped his staff on the ground with a resounding echo. The troops immediately stood at attention and spoke in unison. The Great Mother speaks. The forgiven bleed. Then there was silence once more. Good. Welcome home, forgiven, Malik began. And we cannot wait. To welcome you home victorious once more, he finished. Theron didn't know it yet, but he would never again lay eyes on his home. <laughs>